Scripture says that the traditions and doctrines of men make the word of none effect. So what is it that the traditions and doctrines of men sometimes focus on? They focus on religion. And many people today would say that their religion is their faith. But truly, where is our faith supposed to lie? Today we're going to open up in Mark chapter 3. We're going to look at a few verses in Mark and we're going to be um, in the New Testament today. So in Mark chapter 3, there is a couple of verses that um, some of the religions or traditions and doctrines of men can be confused by. We're going to go to this these two verses and then we're going to move along in the New Testament to connect all the dots so we understand it to its entirety. So Mark chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 says this about Jesus. It says, and he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. So many religions and religious mindsets, again, the traditions and doctrines of men, which scripture says make God's word, make the word of none effect. Sometimes we'll look at just those two verses and say, well, it was just those 12 that Jesus um, had to go to preach and to heal the sick and cast out the devils. Well, we know this to not be true if we study the word in its entirety, but some religious mindsets and some religious cultures take that as just those 12. And just those 12 had power to cast out devils and just those 12 had power to, um, the Holy Spirit power to heal the sick. But we want to look at the Word and see what the Word says. So, let's move on. Mark chapter 16. We'll go over to Mark chapter 16. We're going to look at verses 14 through 20 in Mark chapter 16. This says, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. This is after Jesus has been crucified. Now he has resurrected. And it says, And afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Because remember, now, Judas Iscariot had already betrayed him. So, Judas was no longer part of this group, right? No longer part of the twelve. As they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, now Jesus says, has said, you should have believed. I told you I was going to rise again on the third day. And so their hardness of heart, he says that his 11 had a hardness of heart and that they didn't believe. But now they see that he has risen. Now they see him standing before them. And he had actually been with them. He actually ends up spending 40 days with uh, them. But look here, it says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that, look at your Bible and see what it says, believe. There in verse 17. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. And it goes on to say in verse 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink and any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. You see that? You see where it is those that believe, these signs shall follow them that believe, and people still get stuck on the fact that, that this was 11 now that he is speaking to, and not the 12, okay? Remember, he was speaking to the 12 there in Mark chapter 3. And then Jesus goes through that betrayal of Judas Iscariot. He's crucified. He rises again. He is in a new body. He look, He has a different appearance. He's, he's in a new body. But he is seen of them for 40 days. We're going to see that recorded in scripture here. Um, 
And so he is there with them and he is telling these 11. Now, many people will look and say, well, then he's, he's only given this to now those 11 for them to go and preach the gospel and for them to go and cast out devils and to lay hands on the sick for them to recover and not for everyone. Well, let's just look at scripture and see what it says. We want to make sure and connect all the dots. Go to Acts chapter 1. We're going to start reading in verse 2, and we're going to read down through verse 9 here at first. It says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Again, we're seeing the apostles whom he had chosen. It says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. See? Here it is in scripture and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Now, look, we saw in scripture, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now we're seeing Jesus, um, be, they're reminded of the commandment that he had given to them and that he had told them that they needed to stay in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father here, and being assembled with them, commanded them that they should not depart. There in verse 4, from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they were therefore, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again to the king the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Was Jesus speaking to just those um, 11 now at this time? Yes, he's speaking to these 11. We just saw it recorded in, in scripture that he was speaking to those apostles here now in, in Acts chapter 1. But who is it that was going to reach the uttermost parts of the earth? Who is it that was going to reach across the whole globe? Was it those apostles and those disciples? No. And we saw in scripture where these signs shall follow them that believe. What were they waiting on? Though, what were they waiting on in Jerusalem after Jesus was to be transfigured in heaven, up in heaven? What were they there waiting on? They were waiting on that power there in verse 8, where it says, But ye shall receive power after the, at that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Go ahead and let's read verse 9. It says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received out of him out of their sight. Now Jesus has ascended back into heaven. He's been completely transfigured. But here he was just speaking to them and telling them to wait in Jerusalem. Now let's go on down to verse 12 and see what happens. It says, Then they returned, they into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up in an upper room where abode both Peter, now listen to who all was up there, Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelots and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with, who else is up there? It says, with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. So all these people are up there. Okay, if you read verse 15, we're going to read verse 15. It says, And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Do you hear that? There's about 120 people that are here. What ends up happening? Well, let's go over to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house. Which house? This is the house in that upper room where there is about 120 people, where they were sitting, and they and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
they were able to communicate between one another because there was people from different nationalities that were there and understand what each other was now saying because they were filled with uh, the Holy Spirit power. Why am I making a point of these things? Well, often religion can look at this and say, well, Jesus is only talking to the 12, and then he's now only talking to the 11. Now he's only speaking about the apostles. But we see clearly that the power that was coming upon them that they were waiting on in Jerusalem was the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. Well, God the Father doesn't change. God the Son doesn't change, and God the Holy Spirit doesn't change because they are God, and God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, Scripture says. So why would we expect anything different than what God said that he is giving to them, that Holy Spirit power? Now, but traditions and doctrines of men, that Scripture says makes the word of none effect, they may teach otherwise, but we need to know this is the Holy Spirit that has come upon them of God. We should be expecting the same things that Jesus said. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All of these things we should be expecting. But religion often says otherwise. Think about this. Look back again there at verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. It is clear that these people, the 120 that received this power, did not go to Canada. They did not go to the United States of America. They didn't go to the uttermost. But the power that was to come upon them would be that same power that would help to reach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that is the focus on what we need to understand. Now, ask yourself a question. Does God change? No. Does Jesus change? No. Does the Holy Ghost change? No. But what about us as we are witnessing or being a witness or being ambassadors? Scripture says we are ambassadors for Christ. From, for, and from day to day, do, do we change? Do you do the exact same thing from day to day? No. Do you exercise every part of every talent of every gift that God has given to you every single day? No. Do you... Can you say that since the day that you received Jesus as your Savior that you've prayed every day? You might be able to say yes to that. Have you been a witness to uh, for him every single day? You might be able to say yes to that. But what about three times a day or four times a day? You see, we all exercise this faith that has been given to us in Jesus, having this power, this same power, the Holy Spirit power, in different ways, different times, right? You're not doing the exact same thing every single day. Why am I taking emphasis on that is this. Just because you haven't seen it, maybe somebody have a demon cast out of them, doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is not capable of doing that. Or just because you haven't seen somebody be instantaneously healed right before your eyes, or even the dead made alive again, that doesn't mean it's not the same Holy Spirit capable of doing those things. And we need to take a focus on what that scripture says, that the, tra the traditions and doctrines of men make the word of God of none effect and stand more on the word. You see, is it religion or is it Jesus for you? Because re religion will teach you maybe something that's contrary from what the word says. We need to focus on what Christ said. He is our Lord. And, and our faith needs not to be based upon what someone else is teaching us. When the Bible itself says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach us everything we need to know. And we need to start asking ourselves uh, and going to the Word of God and asking not ourselves, but the Spirit that is with us and looking to the Word of God for the truth and to cancel out some of those things that religion maybe has not been right on because why is there so many different religions even in the christian faith is because different people interpret scripture in a different way that's why you have different religions that are called christians that are called christ followers right you have you have presbyterians 
they, they they do one thing and Methodists do another and and Catholics do another and Baptists do another and Pentecostal another and all these people say that Jesus is my Lord. You have these different perspectives of what the word is saying and then the religion has developed and it needs to not be more focused on religion. Your faith, you shouldn't say is my religion. Your faith should be what the word of God says. And remember this, something I always remind us of, John chapter one, verses one and two says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You see, making the word of none effect is making God of none effect. So let's not allow traditions and doctrines of men to do this. Is it religion or is it Jesus? Or let it be all about Christ for us. Thanks for joining today.